Good day, everyone, and welcome back to First Bank's Wealth Management Market Commentary video series. My name is Gene Todd, Executive Vice President and Managing Director of First Bank's Wealth Management Group. The investment water cooler talk of late has been around the highly popular 60% stock, 40% bond investment portfolio, which has functioned for years as the gold standard for investors' asset allocation. But is this strategy dead? A thing of the past? Many firms, including B of A Merrill Lynch, JP Morgan, and Morgan Stanley, have suggested that that may be the case. The reason why, you ask? Lower expected returns from bonds. Bonds are not only delivering less yield than they have historically, the 10-year Treasury is yielding 1.85% today, and the 10-year German Bund is a negative 0.25%. This means that you pay them to hold your money. Moreover, with rates already so low, investors have less potential for capital gains with bonds. This is a scary proposition given how well the traditional 60% stock and 40% bond portfolio has performed over the years. In fact, over the last 36 years, this allocation has returned approximately 10% per year. Simple math suggests that those returns will be difficult to be replicated in the years to come. The 10-year Treasury was yielding 13.9% 36 years ago, and as I mentioned today, that yield is just 1.85%. J.P. Morgan market strategists estimate that the annual return for a 60-40 portfolio over the next 20 years will average 5.4%. What does that mean in terms of the likelihood of success in achieving your retirement plan? What should investors do? As you've heard me say many times, there is a place for bonds in an investor's portfolio. Bonds pay you interest, and bonds reduce your overall level of risk because their returns have, in most years, been negatively correlated to stocks. Remember, there are no magic bullets. Nothing will guarantee you future returns on par with his historical returns. However, in today's nuanced investment environment, there are things that investors should consider in order to improve their long-term return prospects while still taking acceptable levels of risk. Number one, remember that there are many kinds of bonds, not just low-yielding government bonds. Bonds like stocks should be broadly diversified. International bonds, corporate bonds, muni bonds, high-yield bonds, and even non-rated bonds should all be considered in constructing an appropriate fixed income portfolio. Number two, consider reducing some of your exposure to bonds in favor of other investment alternatives such as real estate, insurance, and alternative lending. Alternative lending options could include exposure to consumer loans, small and middle market business loans, as well as student loans. None of these investment alternatives are new. In fact, financial institutions, endowment funds, and high net worth investors have been using these investment options for years. Your first bank wealth advisor would be happy to explore these opportunities with you to determine what might be appropriate for your unique situation. Thanks for watching. See you next time.